AFC Championships in 12 years. There's no question Dan Reeves was effective in Denver. There's also no mystery as to how he went about it. You felt in fear of your job. You didn't know what to, what to expect from week to week. Dan had his game face on every single minute of every day. To be honest with you, I wouldn't have been here this year if Dan was still here. But one team's drill sergeant is another team's savior. And this summer, Reeves and his rule book arrived in New York. Don't put your helmet on the ground ever. Don't have your chin strap unbuckled. I can't think of all of them. You know, I've gotten so used to them, I don't think about them. The discipline that drove Denver players to despair is working in New York. Even among veterans whose only usual contact with the rules is to break them. What? Uh, the Denver Broncos were ready to get rid of is what we really needed on this team to, to bring some order back to it. Well, he's a very competitive coach, and sometimes that they may rub people wrong. Uh, Dan Reeves has never tried to win a popularity contest. Despite that, Mark Jackson was one of a handful of Bronco players who thought enough of Reeves to follow him east. Back in Denver, meanwhile, where he was succeeded by the popular Wade Phillips, Colorado air is clear safe once again for players to sit on their helmets. With both teams off to good starts, everyone seems to have benefited. The arts disciplinarian thinks it's now time for his old boys to grow up and stop complaining. I hate to think I had, you know, 47 children. I know I couldn't please all my kids if I had 47. I have a tough time with three of them. I don't know that you can ever make decisions where everybody's going to be happy with what you do. I think as a coach, as anybody that's a leader in any organization, you have to do what you think is best for the squad. 40 mile an hour winds and a hostile crowd at Rich Stadium didn't bother Dan Reeves. He looked like he was already thinking ahead to 5-0. and oh. But the mistake-free football that got the Giants this far undefeated deserted them against the Bills. Ben to Denver, That was one of four Giants turnovers and the Bills led 10-0. But in the second quarter, Phil Sims took the Giants down the field after a short punt into the wind and found Chris Calloway in the end zone just before Jeff Wright found him in the backfield. Then it was Buffalo's turn to turn the ball over. Jim Kelly forcing a pass into double coverage. And Sims made the Bills pay with a touchdown pass to Mark Jackson in the closing seconds of the half for a 14-10 lead. And that's how it stayed until late in the fourth quarter, when Jim Kelly kept a Bills drive alive with this third down completion to Pete Metzelaars, then looked to his tight end again with the ball at the eight. Kelly back over the middle. Touchdown, Buffalo. So the Bills narrowly escape a second straight home defeat, and the Giants' unbeaten run is over. I don't think we can fall behind uh, one and four. Well, we need this football game. Richie Pettibone's Redskins may have needed the win, but it was the Giants who went about getting it. Dave Meggett's halfback pass to Mike Sherrard made it 20-0 in the second quarter. And by the time Sherrard caught his second touchdown of the day from Phil Sims in the third, it was 34-7 and effectively over. Mark Rippon had a quiet return at quarterback for the Skins, but it was the lack of defense that really killed them. We obviously got our ass kicked today. East, and while the Giants were without running back Rodney Hampton, that was nothing compared to the Eagles' injury problems. Add defensive tackle Keith Millard to the long list, headed by Randall Cunningham. He sprained his knee on this play. Then Cunningham's backup, Bobby Brister, left the game with a sprained ankle. And the Eagles were down to Ken O'Brien, who only signed two weeks ago. The key to this game, though, was the power of the Giants' offensive line. Whether they were opening holes for Dave Meggett to pick up 19 yards, or giving Phil Sims all the time he needed, he had Ed McCaffrey for the touchdown. Rich Kotite perhaps showing the frustration of a man who can see a promising season slipping away, or in this game, running away. With a 7-3 lead, the Giants kept it on the ground and ran all over Philadelphia. Lewis Tillman is supposed to be a backup, but behind this line, he looked like a superstar. This 10-yard run was one of Tillman's two touchdowns, and by the time the game was over, he'd racked up 169 yards, which is more than his team managed in two games combined against the Eagles last season. Another impressive Giants win, and they now lead the NFC East by themselves. Time, and by then, what was supposed to be a battle between Giants strength and Cowboys speed looked more like men against boys. Troy Aikman was brilliant, completing his first 10 passes, two of them to Alvin Harper for touchdowns, as Dallas built a 17-6 half-time lead. You got another one. 
We've seen some great quarterbacks and some great throwers over the years. But I don't think I've ever seen anybody throw the ball more perfectly than Aikman has. The Giants have come in with the league's best ground game. But the ground is where Dave Meggett and Lewis Tillman spent most of the afternoon. Moving Ken Norton from outside to middle linebacker has really strengthened the Cowboys against the rush. And he was usually in the backfield before the ball carrier was out of it. The Giants did no better in pass protection. The Cowboys had five sacks and Phil Sims was harassed all day. There was a scare though for the Super Bowl champions in the third quarter. Troy Aikman scrambling to his right went down hurt and had to leave the game with a pulled hamstring. But the rest of the Cowboys just picked up the slack. Emmett Smith had 21 of his 117 yards on this carry and finished with a couple of touchdowns to put the game beyond the Giants' reach. Dallas have won six in a row since Emmett came back, the longest streak in the league. While the Giants had the success of their season so far put firmly in perspective, the Cowboys, if they can stay healthy, are on the road to repeat. The doctors don't seem to think that I tore anything, which, which is a good sign. And uh, you know, This next week has not been ruled out. Uh, I, as always, will be optimistic, and, and then I'll be able to play next week. Take a look at this beauty from running back Dave Meggett to Chris Calloway as the Giants rolled over the Redskins running back to get back level with them at the top of the NFC East. But against the Eagles' depleted offense, Dan Reeves decided to let the pass rush loose. To good effect, Ken O'Brien and Bubby Brister managed only 13 completions between them. And although the Giants' offense was hardly spectacular, Bill Sims did muster the game's only touchdown, a 26-yarder to Mark Jackson, and that was enough. I like being a head football coach. You know what I mean? I don't want to give something that, that precious up. There's only 28 of them in the league. I don't want to give that up. But Joe Bugle may have no choice. He's been told he needs a winning season to keep his job. And the loss to the Giants would have made that a mathematical impossibility. The Cards took the lead, though, using the run to set up the play-action pass to Butch Roll. It was 10-6 Phoenix at halftime. With the NFL's best rushing attack held to 46 yards, the Giants had to go to the air. Phil Sims led them 86 yards down the field in the third quarter and put them ahead with this 20-yard pass to Ed McCaffrey. The Cards retook the lead when Steve Berline hit Ricky Prohl from 17 yards out. And it looked like being Joe's day, but down by a point in the last minute, the Giants showed why they keep two place kickers. Long-range specialist Brad D'Aluiso nailed a 54-yarder, leaving the unlucky Bugle to face the loss and the press. I don't keep asking me about that, guys. I keep answering you. I don't care about ultimatums. I want to win. The next week is the... Uh-oh. Bad news for Bugle. The Giants are on the ball, and they want to show why they're top of their division. Sims is looking right all the way, and he finds Callaway for the first down at the Cardinal 42-yard line. Sims pumps, goes left, man wide open. Jackson might have gotten another five or six. Four man rush and Sims rolls out to his right. Pulls up, a lot of time. Here's Jared Bunch. Stiff arm breaks a tackle. Zordich knocks him down at the 20, short of the first down. Nah, you know what that means. Ah! Everything worked this time. It's the end of the Play action. And Sims wanted to go deep. Now he does. He's got Callaway back there. Massey makes the tackle after he got whipped. 38 yards. <laughs> whipped is right. But don't get mad. Get even. <laughs> the Giants smell blood. And the Cardinals look shaken up as the big men just eat up the hash marks. Sims in the end zone. Takes a shot. Touchdown. Ed McCaffrey. Nice pass by That pass on a line. Randall Hill. A nice play for the Cardinals and a first down at the 40-yard line. It's Gary Clark. Hmm, I don't think they like that. Berline. Oh, what a beautiful pass. What a dandy throw. And then the catch by Gary Clark for the Cardinals. Berline, right side, caught by Pro. Touchdown, Phoenix! Well, that wraps up the third ways. Sim sends a rocketing pass to Jackson to set the big men on a roll. 
17-13, Cardinals lead. Sims into the flat, caught by Hampton, who stuffed at the five-yard line. Sims back, drills, incomplete! Oh, no! A field goal from hell! Well, my, my, my. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here's Dreadwell. He's hit immediately at the 27-yard line by David Braxton. Here comes Harvey again. Stims finds Meggett. And Meggett is down at the 30-yard line. Here's Sims. And he's got a man and a first down. Mark Jackson. What a huge first down for the Giants. That gives him a shot at this one. 20 more yards would give Treadwell a shot from 45 or so. Here's Sims finds Meggett. Meggett goes right. Out of bounds. Massey knocked him there. They only used eight seconds. Now, that might not have looked much, but it gave the Giants a go at, yes, they've got it, a last chance field goal. This will be from 55 yards, and it's into a 15-mile-an-hour win. This is for the victory over the Phoenix Cardinals. That might be there. It is! To win their divisions, the Giants were sneaking into the first definite playoff spot of the season. If you can call what Rodney Hampton does sneaking. That run set up a one-yard touchdown, but Hampton went on to have the game of his career. 173 yards rushing on 33 carries reducing the Colts' offense to spectators for long periods. Phil Sims made the playoffs a certainty with this pass to Chris Calloway, the venerable LT. Giants are on the ball. Watch out, Saints. Second and 11. Screen. Hampton, he's got three Giants out in front to provide the convoy, and he picks up a first down up to the 43-yard line tackled by Les Miller. Second and 18. And Megan picks up about six. On third and ten, Phil on a reverse roll throws complete up to the 50-yard line, and Mark Jackson oh, was about three yards shy of the first down, got up and may have picked it up. And this is just a great effort. First on the part of Phil Sims to get it to him. Little play action there. Watch this. He knows that Phil Sims is in trouble. He comes right back to him, arms outstretched. Now watch this. Gets up, gets the yardage for the first down. That's Pro Bowl stuff. On second and ten. The catch is made by Dave Meggett. Little fake toss to Hampton on first down from the 17, and the catch is made by the tight end, Cross, who pulls his way in for the touchdown. Bill Sims looking for Mark Jackson, who do double coverage. Cross coming across. Good read by Sims. And this is what everyone rooting for the Saints has been afraid of all week long, that the Giants are more physical, are more powerful, and right now, giving the appearance of being a whole lot more talented. Howard Cross just scored a touchdown. Archie. And on second and short, Wilson throws and completes it to Quinn Early for the Giant 45. He avoids the rush by Keith Hamilton to get it away. And the Saints have it in New York territory. Here's a little shovel pass to Dalton Hilliard. And on third and long, he breaks it inside the 20 to the 13 to give the Saints the spark they so desperately need at this point. Screen, Hilliard. Inside the 10, he gets it back to the 8-yard line. <laughs> A sneaky move by the Golden Boys. Faking this field goal attempt and moving them temptingly close to a touchdown. 14 to nothing, Giants. With two minutes to go, and Mustard takes it in for the touchdown behind a Derek Mid block. Let's go! One of these. Swing! The Giants scored a field goal to make the score 17 7. The Saints were down, and so was their quarterback Wilson most of the time. many sacks one man can take this time of year. Bye-bye, Wilson. Uh, 
Tommy Barnhart to punt. Line of scrimmage to 31. Dave make it back. Forty. Five-yard kick, and Meggett turns the corner, gets into Saints territory, Goodbye. and Dave Meggett down the sideline, all the way, touchdown. That was a great run, but what a gutsy choice on the part of Meggett. He's going to break to our right and come up the near sideline, but watch the block that's going to happen right there, number 98. There goes Barnhart, flat on his back. Under 10 minutes to play, Buck drops it, second and 18. Billiard. Fumble. Gets it back. And that ball looks like it belongs to the Giants. It's picked off and by of all guys, Jesse Armstead. Time's running out, boys. Start praying for miracle. Hey, that was quick work. Third and goal from the five. LT gets double teamed. The pass into Hilliard. Touchdown. He was in the end zone and he got hammered out of the line and had possession. Take a look at it. Hilliard's moving from left to right. And that ball back behind him, but he came back around and got it, even though three Giants knocked him out of the end 